Hello students. I would be giving a short introduction on a new topic called fiber optics. This topic is very interesting because fibers, optical fibers, they have vast variety of applications. They are used in medicines, in the imaging, illustration components of the endoscope and lot more applications with they are used in sensors and uh, for example they can be sensors to measure strain temperature pressure they are they can be designed to withstand high temperatures and these also immune to they are also immune to electromagnetic interference do not conduct electricity and they can be used for vast variety of applications so first we'll try to understand that what is an optical fiber and what is the basic principle of physics on which it is based and then we'll move further so let us start a short introduction on fiber optics so the basically what is a fiber fiber is a cylindrical wave guide which is made up of low loss materials why low loss so that whenever any light is launched inside the fiber loss is less and the output is more and it can be made of many materials silica glass etc so when light is launched from one side of the fiber it propagates to the other end the first question which comes to our mind is how what is the basic principle on which this propagation of light depends so my first question is this the basic principle of fiber is the very well known phenomena which by with which you all are already familiar that is total internal reflection now we will try to understand that what is total internal reflection and how it is used and how it is helpful in propagation of light inside the fiber so first we'll try to see what is total internal reflection my first question what is total internal reflection this you all might have heard in your class 12 also that when light is launched for example on some surface then at some angle angle of incidence if this then the light is reflected and refracted if this light is being launched at critical angle then the angle of refraction is 90 degree this is my first surface first medium and this is second medium for example the refractive index of first medium is n1 and the refractive index of second medium is n2 and another condition which is important for total internal reflection to happen is that the light should pass from denser to rarer medium rarer medium this is the first condition another condition for total internal reflection to happen is that when the light is incident at critical angle it moves like this the angle of refraction is 90 degree and if my angle of incidence is made greater than critical angle when theta is greater than theta c the light totally internally reflects so this is my second condition for total internal reflection to happen that the angle of incidence is made greater than critical angle what is critical angle the angle at which 
the angle of refraction is 90 degree and if my angle of incidence is more than critical angle it totally internally reflect another condition the light should move from denser to rarer medium if these two conditions are fulfilled we get total internal reflection now we will see how the light propagation inside the fiber is based on this principle or how this due to this principle light is being propagated inside the fiber so i'm saying that light is uh, that fiber is like a cylindrical waveguide in which so basically it is a kind of cylindrical waveguide at which the light is being launched from one end and when the light is being launched inside the fiber it when it strike inside the fiber it should totally internally reflect so for example if i launch light like this we will see more detail the structure in more detail the structure of the fiber first basically what is happening light is being propagated inside the fiber when it strike the surface it should totally internally reflect and then when it strike this surface again this is how light is being propagated inside the fiber now we have to fulfill the conditions of total internal reflection then only it will happen so in order to meet this condition we the structure will try to see what is the structure of the fiber so the structure of the fiber should be such that should be such that total internal reflection occurs occurs inside the fiber then only light will light will propagate inside the fiber so now in order to have total internal reflection we have to meet the two conditions which i have stated earlier that first the angle of incidence should be more than the critical angle and another condition is that the light should move from rare from denser to rarer media now we will see that how these two conditions are met first the fiber in general in order to meet these conditions an optical fiber has three coaxial regions or you can say cylinders three coaxial regions why do we need that we will see in a minute the first region the innermost cylinder is known as core so this is my core whose refractive index is n1 suppose this is my central axis and this is like a cylinder then so my innermost region is core with refractive index n1 then the core is surrounded by this is not enough so core is surrounded by another coaxial region known as cladding why do we need this whose refractive index let us say n2 now so i am saying that i have a core and then i have another coaxial region known as cladding of another material
why do I need this? Because, so I can just make some lines for your understanding. Now, here I'm launching light at some angle of incidence. We'll see later that how we make sure that this angle of incidence should be greater than the critical angle. So at present, we are taking it for granted. Uh, slowly, we'll try to derive that condition, which is because we know that it has to be there in order to get total internal reflection. So at present, I'm assuming that somehow I'm managing this angle of incidence to be greater than the critical angle. Then, but this angle here, total internal reflection is not happening. So this condition will imply, will constrain this angle. And here, when the ray is being incident on the inner surface of the fiber, here total internal inflection will happen. So this angle has to be greater than critical angle. This angle should be greater than critical angle, which in turn will constrain this and which in turn will constrain this. We will see later. So here first, this ray should move from denser to rarer medium. So if inside layer core has refractive index N1 and clad has refractive index N2 and we demand N1 should be greater than N2, then the ray is moving from denser to rarer medium. So my this condition is satisfied. And if by some means this angle phi C, I make, if it is phi C critical angle, it will go like this. But if I somehow constrain that this angle of incidence at core clad interface is greater than critical angle, the light will totally internally reflect. Then the light will come here. Again, such conditions are met here. Core, it has effective index N1 is greater than N2. Again, the ray which strikes here, it is going from denser to rarer media. And this angle is again more than critical angle. Again, in, it will totally internally reflect. This is how light propagates inside the fiber. So this structure is important that we have two coaxial layers, core of refractive index N1, clad of refractive index N2, where N1 is greater than N2. is important for total internal reflection to occur. So, and also in addition to these, we have one more layer, cladding, whose refractive index index is less than core. So now we have understood why it is required. And one more outer layer, outermost layer, layer known as jacket to protect the fiber. Jacket to protect the fiber. So we have already seen that one condition is satisfied. The light is moving from denser to rarer media inside the fiber and this is satisfied with its structure. Now we will see that what do we do or how do we make sure that the angle of and what is the or what is the condition required to make this angle at the core clad interface more than critical angle. This we will try to see in the next lecture. Thank you.